welcome to my channel and this is the weekly wrap up for technically the second but the first week of November, November the 4th through the 10th. checkup or weekly book review check-in for November the 4th through the 10th. I had a, a very emotional reading week. Um, as you can see, I am still in my swim mom gear because we pulled as the youngest group of uh, the team ended up getting scheduled to have our meets first thing in the morning. So yeah. I was at the pool at like 6 a.m. this morning and it was no fun but I thought I was gonna be productive but um obviously I was super tired and yeah I did finish two books though in between last night and today so well yesterday when you guys see this but today when my week ends on the 10th so yeah I'm rambling now wow Okay, let's get into this review week. The first book that I read this week was Accidentally Married, Married Number One by Victorine E. Aleski, and I placed this in a rom-com. I read this for Daylight Save-A-Thon, which is a read-a-thon that was quickly thought up by a YouTuber, another YouTuber. I'll put her name and her information down in the description box. But she threw out there, hey, let's do a readathon for Daylight Savings. And I suggested this name of Daylight Savathon. And I think I like it because we read for 25 hours this time because it's fall and you fall back in the spring. Hopefully we can do it again and we'll read for 23 hours. So the night that you either switch your clock forward or you switch your clock back if you participate in daylight savings will be the daylight savings a thon but that's i read this book for that rambling again gave it four stars i listened to it in an audiobook yay and uh, this follows madison who goes into an office thinking that she's going in for a job interview and she sort of has this like <gasps> lumpy you know, ill-fitting suit on and come to find out the job that she is interviewing for is to be a Jared's fake girlfriend because he went and told his parents that, you know what, he is, he has a girlfriend. And they were like, well, prove it, dude. And then come to find out once he got there, um, Jared started to be sort of a douche. So Madison was like, oh, I got your number. I got, I got you. I got you. By the way, <laughs> we're getting married. What? Okay. And to hold on because there are some other family issues that are going on to hold on to this lie. It just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And it was a really cute book. It definitely fit that whole fake relationship thing. So it was a little typical, but Overall, it was a great rom-com. Their banter back and forth, Madison and Jared's banter was pretty freaking amazing. The next book I read was Beneath His Stars by Amy Knight. I placed this in Young Adult. I give this book five amazing stars. I read it as an ARC. It did release this week, so please go check that out. And this book, you are introduced to Liv. You're introduced to her when she is at a boarding school. She's about to turn 18 or has turned 18, but she's still under her stepmom's control. So it sort of has this Cinderella feel to it. She has lost her dad, but she has a stepmom. They live on this very rich island in South Carolina. Well, the one thing that Liv did with her dad before he passed away was to cross the bridge over into the town that is connected or near the island and look at the stars in this old abandoned lot. Well, after he passes, she continues to do this and one night she's sort of roughed up and or is approached by some ruffians and Adam 
sees her sort of saves her in a small little way he is 19 years old when they first meet she's 16 so it sort of has a semi taboo feel to it but 16 and 19 isn't that big of a jump especially since she's going into or is in her junior year of high school going into her senior year and he is like a freshman in college so the age gap seems like it's a, a big leap, but it really isn't. They get to know each other underneath the stars, and they find some things out. And wow, 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 wow. Now, this does end on a cliffhanger because it is part of a duet. The next book does come out here shortly, which I already have, and I will be reading it soon. You guys will probably hear about it either next week or the following week. But yes, I'm so looking forward to seeing what happens because the way that it ended just whew, had me all just crazy, 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 crazy. And I was a little, I wasn't sure if I was going to place this in a young adult, if I was going to place this in a new adult, but in the end, it definitely is a young adult book, but I have a feeling that the second book in the duet is definitely going to be a new adult book. The next book I read was a lucky in love by casey west this is definitely a ya book i read this book for lalathon if you don't know what lalathon is books and lala lala she hit fifty thousand subscribers so her followers and people that follow her were like hey let's do a readathon let's read your favorite books so this was one of lala's favorite books and i decided to read it I gave it four stars. I listened to it on audiobook. I wasn't really feeling it. Um, so what happens is that Maddie is a high schooler who ends up winning the lottery. And you sort of get to see the dynamic of what happens when someone really young comes into a lot of money. Um, I'll leave it at that. And there is a love interest, his name is Seth, but it's like, do we really need that love interest or could it have just been a story about her figuring out how to manage this newfound luck? Yeah, that's all I gotta say about that one. The next book I read was Heartbreak Warfare by Heather M. Orgeneron and Kate Stewart. Now, this book I am going to review a little bit different. So as you saw the cover when I said their names, and I'll remove that to make sure it's gone, but I'm going to do this in two different sections because this book just... Whew. So when I get to the spoiler-ish part of this review I will put the book back up here and we'll leave it here until I am done and make sure to check below to see the timestamp for the next review as well if you want to skip that spoilerish part but yeah I need to talk I have feelings about it and everything like that so non-spoiler part right now this book follows Katie Gavin and Briggs it sounds like a little bit of a love triangle. This is not your typical love story. It is about soldiers. It is about war. It's about the effects of those things that happen in your life. And it's emotional. It's raw. It is just... <sighs> it was one of those books that I was just like, I don't know if I like this or not. I there were so many moments in here and I gave it five stars in the end but if you want to stay and find out exactly why stay for the spoiler part but I can't really tell you it's a book that you really sort of need to go into blind and have it move you but there are a few things that you need to understand that this book is not a hearts and flowers love story it is, oh, it's just special. It's so special. It's so real. It is so real. So 
I have seen a couple reviews with lower stars that are like, oh, this isn't realistic. I am a vet and I am here to tell you this book is a very real, very real. And yeah. So now for the spoiler section. Remember, when this book leaves is when the next book will be reviewed and the spoiler section will be done. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please timestamp down below in the description box to the next review. Okay. So our characters are Katie and Gavin. Ga Katie and Gavin are married. Now, when I first started this book, I was like, okay, I knew going in that this was going to be a story about soldiers. And anyone that's been in the military will let you know. And if they've been, if they were in there long enough to really obtain that community, they know that when you say soldiers, you're saying the army. When you say airmen, you're talking about air force. When you say marines, you're talking about marines. When you talk about the navy, you class them differently. And then of course, coast guard, which isn't really a branch, but they get a spot in in the, t at the table. Um, so there were a few things that really kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Initially, they continued <laughs> in the beginning of the story. They talk about how Katie and Gavin are married. However, Katie is enlisted and Gavin is an officer. Yeah, well, officers and enlisted cannot be married unless there is some serious, extreme circumstances that go along with it. Um, and this all takes place, I would probably have to say, after September 11th, because Katie ends up getting deployed to Iraq. And they have a kid together. So you start off, and it really kicked me in the gut, because I have single female friends that have kids that have been deployed and have had to leave their kids. And this first scene in this book is all about her saying goodbye to her husband, saying goodbye to her kid that's like six or seven and going to Iraq. So, so many emotions. I could feel my friends in this moment and know their pain and their 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 hearts at that point so katie ends up going and she ends up meeting a infantry single infantry guy named briggs he flirts with her he's handsome and she's a medic by the way so she works in a clinic he's an infantryman they become friends and he ends up talking her into going on a mission a humanitarian mission so that she leaves the base now i enjoyed that part of it and i could feel the realism in that i when i was in i was a military police officer and military police officers is like one step down from being on that front line they are combat support units so i could definitely see how and why and a female being outside of the wire and things like that so i was there for that things that i didn't like or questioned was the fact that katie had well no i guess i couldn't question it because she's a medic and though she was a staff sergeant their roles are pretty much in the hospital in the clinic things like that there are combat medics and medics of of that nature but most of them if they're male then they'll go out with the infantry units and very few females actually go out with the unit so what happens is they get ambushed and they are captured briggs katie and a couple of other soldiers are captured and some things go down by this point i am completely invested in this story i am like Oh, my heart. I had to put it down a couple times. I had to take a couple breaks. I had to collect myself because I don't know that I could. I could have friends that would go through this. Now, 
thing that bothered me about the whole ambush, well, not the ambush, the POW status of it was that we, since 9-11, have only had, I want to say there was five of them, five POWs that have come back. Everyone else has either, either been KIA or they're still miss missing in action or there were classified as missing in action and then they are now considered KIA because their remains have been found and things like that. So they get rescued. A whole shitload of shit goes down during that ambush and during their capture. It's going to rip your heart out. It is extremely graphic. So if you have any triggers for any of that sort of dark content you want to tread lightly take the breaks self love yourself if you seem to get overwhelmed by it but come back to it because i almost dnf'd it and i'm so glad i didn't so they return home and they now are dealing with the memories and the things that happened while they were captured. Whew. So here is where I start to like have my wishy-washy feelings about it. I PM to Kate Stewart a couple times because I was like, well, that wouldn't actually happen. Sort of like Katie and Gavin, the, her husband, being married. I was like, that really wouldn't happen because of Fractal Nation uh, fraternization regulations were set up when I had first come in. So pre September 11th and like the late nineties, they really like geared down on that. And I completely understand that not all soldiers understand all of the regulations. I just happened to be an MP. So I was one that had to sometimes investigate those type of allegations and had personal experience when it came to that regulation specifically. Then what I really found a hard time with was that their PTSD representation was amazing. Amazing. And you don't actually see the representation in full until the end of the book. And I loved that because that means that they emotionally sucked you in to what Katie was going through, what Briggs was going through, what Gavin was going through. I kind of wish that they had a little bit more about how Gavin was dealing with that. Um, I do question the length of time that it took them to discharge Katie after her release and after her stint in Germany and everything like that. I kind of question that as well because when you're in Iraq and you get injured, you're taken to Germany, you're stabilized, and then you are brought back to the States, either to Walter Reed or to Fort Sam Houston, which is in Texas. And these two people were stationed in Texas, so I would have it would have been more likely that they went to Texas, especially since some of the injuries that Katie um, sustained were massively treated at Fort Sam Houston. So, and then she ends, they end up, the army ends up discharging her a month after they get out. And I find that very questionable. I actually worked in a, a medical, um, board section when I was in Texas, uh, <laughs> at one of the hospitals that would have, uh, actually been, part of this um story and it takes a lot longer than a month for people to transition out of the military especially with the issues and problems that katie and briggs and gavin were dealing with so i found that a little bit questionable however i give it the benefit of a doubt that for the story's purposes we probably had to cut all that out type thing but at the same time some of the things that they went through could have been managed by the warrior support teams that are dealt with there so 
overall, this book is more of a story about how one soldier deals with PTSD and trauma and tragedy and self-help and family and finding themselves. Um, I don't necessarily buy into the love triangle that was set up. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Briggs. I did love Gavin. Loved, loved, loved him. Especially after I got over the whole possibility of fractionization and some of the terms that were used in the beginning of the book are marine terms and not army terms. Um, so yeah. But overall, I give this book five amazing stars. It is going to take you on a journey. I don't think it's a love story of sorts. Um, I think it's more of a love story about yourself and acceptance and PTSD and things like that. And then the fact that Kate and Heather put in the back of the book, according to the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, veterans make up one third of the nation's homeless population. Approximately 20 take their lives every day. If you know someone that's a vet struggling with suicidal thoughts or PTSD, let them help them get them help with this number right here. Please. Alrighty, so the next book that I read was When Dimple Met Rishi by San Sandahai Menon. This is a YA book. I read this because of Lalathon and I give it four stars. I listened to it on audiobook and this book follows Dimple who is a female by the way. She is Indian and she wants to be a coder in the tech world. She wants to go to a conference and she comes from a family that is not necessarily well off but they want her to get married. That's what they pretty much feel that college is all about. And yeah, Rishi is a well off Indian male who is told by his parents that he's going to sort of do an arranged marriage with a dimple. In the beginning of the book, I was like, um, he sort of says that he's not about the hearts and flowers and the romance and looking for that one. But then as the story goes along, you're like, wait a second, Rishi, I thought you said you weren't into the hearts and flowers. But he like takes on a new face of trying to romance and woo Dimple and they're, the way that's broken down, it's broken down over a summer conference of like six to eight weeks. So it was a little rushed for me. A little May, December type love story, a little insta love. But at the same time, it is about, it is about arranged marriages. So, and yeah, there's a lot of Indian culture that goes into it. I'm not Indian, so I can't say if it's accurate or not, but I do believe the author is Indian in, um, in descent. So it is own voices. And overall, I thought it was a pretty good book. I enjoyed it. Then the final book that I read was Closer by Alexa Riley. This is erotica and it's a short story. I give this book five stars. Um, this is a podcast. So check out Read Me Romance if you are looking for a podcast that is going to be short, quick stories. They launched it on November the 5th. The link is down in the description box. You can get to read me romance and listen to these stories it's going to be right now i believe there's 12 other authors that are signed up for it and they're going to give you a couple chapters of their stories every single day for five days and then you can either listen to it on friday for the whole entire story together or you can listen to it in pieces i listen to this one in pieces and good lord alexa riley never fails to bring the hot and steamy and just like whoo Oh, sweet Lord. So I ended up reading the last 
um, two episodes or listening to the last two episodes while I was sitting at my son's swim meet this morning. Yeah, that was pretty interesting because them last two woo, episodes are real hot and steamy. And it's like, oh, I'm glad I'm not reading this on my Kindle because these people would be like, why are you reading that nasty book? <laughs> that nasty book of these kids all around you. Yes, yes. But it was amazing. It was amazing. I loved it. I can't wait for Tessa Bailey's renaissance man i believe her story is and that will be next week i'm looking forward to it i'm also looking forward to kennedy ryan's story <sighs> so excited about that one too and i'm just looking forward to all of these different authors that are going to be presenting stories i can't wait it's going to be great you guys should definitely check out this podcast description go check it out <sighs> Alrighty, what am I currently reading? Let's get to it. So I am currently reading The Darkest Corners by Sydney Jameson. And this book, I haven't started it yet, but I will be starting it. It is going to be an arc. It comes out, uh, let's see, it comes out December the 20th. The author has given it to me as an advanced read because I read her other series before and absolutely love them. She is actually in the UK. I love her take on her books. She says this one is different and I'm looking forward to jumping into what this story is all about. I am currently reading A Dear Diamond by Steffi Walls who is in the UK right now. What up Steph? having fun I hope. Um, this book is completely different than the normal Steffi Walls books. This book actually doesn't release until December the 9th as well. No. I'm reading it now and this is very different from the normal Steffi Walls books that I read. Normally she gives me angst and I'm like ready to like choke her out and like what do you got me reading right now? This one is fire. It is a so fire. I was sitting at the swim meet once again and was like, ooh, who is looking over my shoulder just over the first two two chapters? I was like, oh my goodness. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I PM'd her and she was like, yeah, this one's different. And I was like, yeah, I I'm gonna have to stop reading this because uh, I got people looking over my shoulders. Can't be having the kids read this, this dirty, dirty. Yeah, yeah, like dirty, dirty in a good way. And I've actually got a couple more pages read and I'm like oh this is getting good because this follows Riker who is connected but not connected to a sort of almost gang or underground sort of mafia maybe sort of feel I think and Nikki I believe that's her name she catches Riker's eye when she's working that pole and I'm just now getting into Nikki's story. Um, I found out that she has a mother who has done bad and gotten some shit. And we're going to find out what's going on with that. So those are the two books that I am currently reading. I will probably pick up another audiobook because on Sunday my son will be swimming again. So And we got the early session again. Um, so I don't know what I will be reading at that point. Uh, but yeah. Have you heard of any of the books that I just talked about? What did you think about them? If you have read them, let me know down in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box. There's also a giveaway going on right now, guys, so please go check out that video. I will make sure it's linked, or you guys should have already seen the link in the cards for that. It goes until November the 23rd, the day after Thanksgiving, which is, yeah, the 23rd or 24th. So Black Friday is when I will be picking the winner. Go check out that video, please. I would love to give away some things. Go find out what I'm giving away as well. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.